chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again in this lecture we shall discuss about quadrilaterals and parallelograms we shall also discuss a number of properties of a parallelogram but first of all let us start with what is a quadrilateral a quadrilateral is any figure that is having four corners like a b c and d this is a quadrilateral a b c d it can have angles of any measure the sides can have any lengths there will be four sides there may or may not be any relation between the four sides there may or may not be any relation between its angles so any figure with four corners is a quadrilateral a quadrilateral has an angle sum property the angle sum property states that the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees if you remember the case of a triangle the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 but in case of a parallelogram the interior angles they add up to 360 degrees we can prove this also for this let us join b and d together this angle can be labeled as 1 this angle is labeled as 2 this angle is labeled as 3 and this angle is labeled as 4 now we can see that this figure quadrilateral is composed of two triangles second triangle bcd first triangle abd we can apply angle sum property to each of the triangles so angle a plus angle 1 plus angle 3 this should be equal to 180 degrees it is the sum of the interior angles of the upper triangle likewise we can take up the lower triangle in that case we can write angle c plus angle 4 plus angle 2 equal to 180 degrees that is the sum of this angle c this angle 4 and this angle 2 this has to be 180 degrees now we can add them one to one angle a plus angle c plus this one and 2 we can group together likewise we can group 3 and 4 angle a is there c is there 1 plus 2 angle 1 plus 2 is b so we can make this as angle b and angle 3 and angle 4 they together are angle d so we can write this as angle d so this proves that angle a plus angle b plus angle c plus angle d will be equal to 180 plus 180 360 degrees so the interior angles of a quadrilateral will always add up to 360 degrees now let me take up what is a parallelogram a parallelogram is a special quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are parallel to each other the condition is that this side 
has to be parallel to this side and this side has to be parallel to this side. So both the sides, both the pairs have to be parallel to each other. If we say only one pair is parallel, the other is not parallel, then that won't be a parallelogram. All the four sides must be involved in the relationship. This parallel to this one, this parallel to this one. So if opposite sides are parallel to each other, then that quadrilateral is called a parallelogram. With this definition of a parallelogram, it is possible to derive, it is possible to prove a number of interesting facts. I have collected these facts in the form of various theorems. We will prove all of them one by one that will help us develop good reasoning abilities and also help us get a hold over geometry. So with this definition in mind, let us start solving our theorems. We will start with this one first. It says if each pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is equal, then it is a parallelogram. So we have been given a figure a quadrilateral. We can label this quadrilateral as A, B, C, D. We have been given that the length of CD is equal to the length of AB. The length of AD is equal to the length of BC. But we have not been given whether this is parallel to this or this is parallel to this. We have to prove that this quadrilateral will be a parallelogram that is if this side is equal to this, this is equal to this, then this side will be parallel to this, this side will be parallel to this. To prove this, let us join A to C. So we will write join A to C. When you join A to C, we get two triangles ADC and ABC. We assert that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC. We will, I am asserting that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC. They are congruent, why? Because CD is equal to AB. CD is equal to AB, one thing. AD is equal to BC. And AC is common. So by triple S rule, these two triangles are congruent. If these are congruent, then the corresponding angles have to be equal. So angle opposite to this single dash, that is this angle, I will cut it like this, should be equal to the angle opposite to this side with single dash, that is this angle. This proves that if AC is viewed as a transversal, then alternating angles this and this are equal, which means AD is parallel to BC, which implies AD is parallel to BC. Likewise, by considering this diagonal, by joining B and D, we can prove that DC is parallel to AB. DC parallel to AB. AD is parallel to BC. So if each of the pairs of opposite sides is parallel, 
then this figure will automatically be a parallelogram by definition. This proves the theorem. Let us proceed to our next theorem now. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. Now we have been given a figure which is already a parallelogram. That is, if the figure is ABCD, we have been given that AD is parallel to CB and DC is parallel to AB. And we have to prove that AD is equal to BC and DC is equal to AB. For this also, once again, join A and C. So we will write join A and C. When we join A and C, it becomes transversal for AD and for BC. Therefore, angle 1 will be equal to angle 2, which implies angle 1 is equal to angle 2 and angle 3 is equal to angle 4. Why is angle 3 equal to angle 4? Because DC is parallel to AB and this is the transversal. So alternate angles have to be equal. Another thing, AC is equal to AC is common. So we can say that this is angle, this is angle and this is side. So by the angle, angle side rule, which implies by angle angle side rule, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC. So, this triangle is congruent to the lower triangle, which immediately implies corresponding sides have to be equal. The side opposite to angle 4 is BC. BC should be equal to 4 is equal to angle 3. The side opposite angle 3 is AD. And obviously the remaining side AB will be equal to the remaining side DC of the upper triangle. This proves the theorem that BC is equal to AD and AB is equal to DC. This is proved. So one important property that we have found is that in case of a parallelograms, opposite sides will be equal in length. They will be parallel because a parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which opposite sides are parallel. But if opposite sides are parallel, they have to be equal also. This is what we have proved with the help of our first two theorems. Now let us move on to our next theorem. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. This is a parallelogram that has been given to us. A, B, C and D. We have been given AB is parallel to DC 
एंड ए डी इज पैरल टू बी सी इफ दीज आर पैरल टू इच अदर देन द ऑपोजिट एंगल्स हैव टू बी इक्वल वी हैव टू प्रूव फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट एंगल डी इज इक्वल टू बी एंड एंगल ए इज इक्वल टू एंगल सी टू प्रूव एंगल डी इज इक्वल टू एंगल बी एंड एंगल ए इज इक्वल टू एंगल सी सो इफेक्टिवली वी कैन से दैट इफ यू हैव ए पैरलोग्राम देन ऑपोजिट एंगल्स विल ऑल्सो बी इक्वल ऑपोजिट साइड्स विल ऑल्सो बी इक्वल टू ईच अदर लेट एस नाउ प्रूव फॉर द केस ऑफ एंगल्स साइड्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी प्रूव इन आर प्रीवियस थियोरम लेट एस टेक अप द केस ऑफ एंगल्स द रूट विल रिमेन द सेम ज्वाइन ए टू सी ज्वाइन ए टू सी सो वी गेट दिस ट्राइंगल एंड वी गेट दिस लोअर ट्राइंगल सिंस ए डी इज पैरल टू बी सी दिस एंगल वन विल बी इक्वल टू एंगल टू ट्रांसवर्सल ऑल्टरनेट एंगल्स एंगल वन इज इक्वल टू एंगल टू एंड दिस साइड इज पैरल टू दिस साइड इज गिवन वी विल हैव एंगल थ्री is equal to angle 4 transversal angles i am writing it as transversal angles or alternate angles this angle is equal to this i'll put one tick one tick and two ticks and two ticks another thing that we can see is that ac is common to or equal to ac is common ac is common this angle is correspondingly equal this angle is correspondingly equal so angle side angle property this triangle abc is congruent to triangle adc this triangle is congruent to the upper triangle and once they are congruent the angles d and b will be equal to each other which implies angle b should be equal to angle d similarly by taking the other diagonal bd we will be able to prove that angle a is equal to angle c similarly we can prove angle a equal to angle c so if a figure is a parallelogram then the opposite angles they will have to be equal to each other this theorem could have been proved easily by a second method also let me show you that method supposing this is our given parallelogram this side is parallel to this so this angle a c d if this angle is alpha then this angle will have to be 180 minus alpha the sum of the interior angles on the same side of transversal they have to be supplementary so if this is alpha 
this will be 180 minus alpha and likewise AB is parallel to DC so 180 minus alpha and this have to be supplementary which means this angle will have to be alpha because only then 180 minus alpha plus alpha will be 180 and on this side 180 minus alpha plus alpha will be 180. So this angle has been proved equal to this angle. Likewise if we see this, this angle will have to be supplementary with this because AD is parallel to BC and CD is the transversal. So this angle has to be 180 minus alpha. So opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal and adjacent angles are supplementary. Let us move on to our next theorem now.